Welcome to Exact Education. The purpose of this video is to define Euler's constant by calculus rate of change facilitated through Excel. An exponential function takes a base number to the power of x. Providing the base number is greater than one, we have rate of change that gets bigger and bigger. That's the definition of an exponential function. Euler's number happens to be a special case of an exponential process that happens to define natural growth and decay. For example, radioactivity, for example, voltage across a capacitor in a charge or discharge circuit. Euler's number is a transcendental number, which means it cannot be defined as an integer fraction. The rate of change of e to the power of x, Euler's number to the power of x, is the same function. And we are going to prove that through numerical calculus. On this sheet here, what we have is the exponent step in increases of 0 0.005 steps. We're working out the base number to the power of x for each x step. In this case, we're taking the base number two and we're calculating two to the power of x in this column here. And then we're plotting that out as in this blue curve here. We're also numerically calculating the rate of change of this function. How are we doing that? We're doing that by tiny straight lines. So the concept of breaking a curve down into tiny straight lines, differential calculus. We're not using any rules here. We're actually doing it by tiny straight lines. We're taking, for each step change in horizontal, we're taking the change, the delta change in Y, divided by the delta change in X, and we're working out the linear slope gradient for that change. And we're working out the rate of change of that function in that way. So if we then take those three columns and we plot them out, what we can see here is we've got the rate of, we've got Euler's two to the power, sorry, not to Euler's, we've got two to the power of X function, which is a nonlinear function, this curve function in blue. And we also have this function here, which is the rate of change function. We can see visually that these functions are not the same because they're separated out in the graph. The rate of change is less than the original function. If we do the same procedure, but we take a base number, we double the base number to four, we do the same procedure, same steps, 0 0.005 and X, work out in this column here, four to the power of X. We then work out the rate of change using the numerical calculus, tiny straight lines, getting the gradient of those tiny straight lines, the delta of vertical divided by the delta horizontal, we see that the rate of change when we plot it out as a graph is now greater than the original function. Now that would suggest at some point there's a crossover between the rate of change being greater than the original function and the rate of change being less than the original function. And lo and behold, if we change that base number to 2.71828, we work out the e to the power of x, 2.71828 to the power of x. We work out the rate of change using numerical calculus again, and we plot the graph of rate of change against the original function. Lo and behold, they now overlap. If we actually want to look at the numbers and compare them, they are within reason, within three or four decimal points the same. If we plot them out in a graph, they overlap. So what that does is it proves by numerical calculus that the rate of change of e to the power of x is the same function e to the power of x. And we have proved that via numerical calculus.